In example two, we have a problem that I think is easier with the Lagrange process. Let's see if you agree with me. Now we have a lidless box, which of course is assumed to be in a rectangular shape, a rectangular prism, and it has no lid on the top, All right? And so that lidless box is made of two square meters of cardboard, and that is a constraint. We're going to find the dimensions of the box that maximize the volume. So there's our objective function right there. We want to maximize volume. All right, now we've already done this section, this particular problem. So let me just write this. All right, so that's the objective function. We did this problem back before in section 12.8, and if you remember, it was kind of a pain. I mean, we had this V sub X, and then we just kind of waved our hands at V sub Y because we didn't have enough paper to do that. And then we did all of this math down here to come up with the numbers square root of 6 over 3, square root of 6 over 3, and square root of 6 over 6. So let's see if the Lagrange multiplier method makes a little bit more sense or is easier to work with. All right, let's think. The objective function is volume. So I will deal with that. So our objective function, volume, is f of x, y, and z, which is x times y times z, right? I mean, it's volume of a box. So this is the objective function over here. Now the constraint is a little bit more, well, fun. <laughs> so the constraint is based on the surface area. So remember, you have you know two fronts, two sides, and only one bottom, right? So front and back to the two sides. So you're going to have xy on the bottom plus 2xz plus 2yz. And it has to all be equal to 2 because you have 2 square meters of cardboard. So that's the surface area. All right, well, this is not equal to 0. So we have to change that to a new function. And I'm going to change my color when I do it. So our constraint becomes g of xy is equal to xy, oh, excuse me, g of xyz, excuse me, g of xyz. is equal to xy plus 2xz plus 2yz minus 2 has to be equal to 0, right? It must be equal to 0. Can't say it enough. All right, so now remember the Lagrange multiplier method. So the Lagrange method says, hey, the gradient of your objective function is equal to lambda times the gradient of your constraint your constraint function. All right, so that means that we're going to have fx, fy, fz is equal to lambda times gx, gy, gz. Okay, so let's start with fx. The derivative of this with respect to x would be yz. So yz, xz, xy is equal to lambda times, and then this will actually be a little trickier derivative. So y plus 2z plus nothing, right? So y plus 2z, all right, x, nothing, and 2z. So x plus 2z. And then for the z portion, let's see, nothing, so that's 0. This has a z, so 2x plus 2y. There we go. All right, so what we do is we set these off into pairs. Um, you kind of don't have to, just think about what's gonna happen. So this first piece over here is gonna be equal to lambda times this piece, and then the next piece is gonna be lambda times this piece. Or in other words, what you can say is lambda is equal to each of these pieces divided by each other, right? So if I would say lambda is equal to, and I take the first one, it's yz divided by y plus 2z. But it's also xz divided by x plus 2z. But it's also xy divided by 2x plus 2y. It is all of those things, right? So because 
you would take this one over on the left and divide by this one over on the right in order to find each of those component parts. And lambda is always equal to itself. Okay, so now we just take two of them. It doesn't matter which two. Take any two you like. To help you out, I kind of changed my color choices here. All right, so I'm going to take these two and I'll put them together. Right, so what is this going to mean? This is mean yz times x plus 2z is equal to xz times y plus 2z. It's so important to make sure your z's do not look like 2's. Um, when I was in multivariable calculus is when I started putting slashes across my z's because I needed them to look different. Alright, I'm going to distribute. This is xyz. Oh, actually before I distribute, I can divide everything by z. If I divide both sides by z, these z's disappear. That's even easier. Alright, so divide by z, imagine in your head right? Z's cancel. You're left with XY plus 2YZ equals XY plus 2XZ. So then subtract away the XY's, they're gone. And then so you're left with 2YZ is equal to 2XZ. In other words, X equals Y or Y equals X, right? Here, if you want to see it, 2YZ equals 2XZ, but that means Y is equal to X. Great, wonderful, lovely. So I know y is equal to x, lovely. Then let's do it again. Uh, let's take a different combination. So I'm just gonna grab pink here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take these two now and say, okay, that means that xz times 2x plus 2y is equal to xy times x plus, uh, let's see, 2z. Right? Just cross multiplication because they're proportions. Now they both have x's in them, if you can see that. So I can just divide out x from both sides. So you just kind of imagine divide by x both sides in your head. And that leaves you 2xz plus 2yz equals xy plus 2yz. Well again, the 2yz's are going to cancel, right? Because you just subtract it from both sides. And you're left with 2xz is equal to xy. So get rid of the x's on both sides, divide both sides by x, and you're left with y is equal to 2z. Now in the interest of thinking about this, I want to use my constraint to find solutions. Okay, what will that mean? Well, let's look at our constraint function. Our constraint function's right here, right? Well, actually, you can use the equation or you can use the function, either one. So xy plus 2xz plus 2yz. So let me write that. So it's xy plus 2xz plus 2yz minus 2 equals 0. So what I want to do is there's three variables in one equation. So I want to take these other two equations and substitute and get rid of all the other variables. I want to make it so everything is x or everything is y, something like that. All right, well, let's make everything y. I mean, why not? So we can do that. The one thing I will say is that that would mean that z is equal to y divided by 2, right? So that's going to go in right there and right there. So where there was a z, we're going to put in y over 2. And where there was an x, we're going to put in a y. So that's going to go in right there and right there. So we're going to have... Let's see, y times another y, right? So it's going to be y times y plus 2 times y times z, right? So there's a substitution right here. So that, that x equals y. So where there was an x has become a y plus 2y, and then z becomes y over 2. Oh, crap. I forgot. C is y over 2 right here also. I'm trying to get rid of every variable, and I didn't right here. There's a z. I left that in there. Got to get rid of it. Everything's got to turn into y. And it didn't have to be y. You could have done x. You could have done z. You could have figured, you know, whatever of these out you want. So I just kind of did y because I felt like it. <laughs> I figured this had y in it, that had y in it, so it was kind of easy for me. Except I forgot right there. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so this is y squared. Plus, well, the twos are going to cancel, plus another y squared, plus the twos are going to cancel again, plus another y squared, minus 2 equals 0. 
So we have 3y squared minus 2 equals 0. That means that y squared is equal to 2 thirds. So y is equal to the square root of 2 thirds. Technically, it's plus or minus, but the minus is impossible because it's a box, if you remember from before. And then if you want to simplify this, or to, to, to rationalize it, you multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3, which gets you square root of 6 over 3, and it's meters. So there we go. Why is that? But then we know x is y, so x is the same thing. So x is also square root of 6 over 3, right? because x equals y. Here, I'll just write it that way. So there's that dimension. And then z, if you remember, y is equal to 2z, so z is equal to y divided by 2. So z is equal to y divided by 2, and that means that z is equal to the square root of 6 over 6. And we're done. So we take the gradient of f, the gradient of g, we have a lambda in between them. Then we solve for lambda to come up with patterns, and then we use those patterns, like two of them, right, and then another two, to find relationships between our variables. And then we use that in the constraint in order to find our solutions. Okay? I personally think it is easier than what we did before with all of this, but it's kind of eh, six in one hand, half dozen in the other. It's, it's a matter of personal preference. But it also works, as we are seeing here. It does, in fact, work and find the answers for us. In this case, the dimensions of the box that would have a maximum volume.